Well, WCTC, as you know, pleased once again to support the New Jersey Film Festival. The spring 2019 festival is underway at Rutgers University. And it lets meet a couple of the filmmakers whose work is going to be shown this coming weekend. Uh, we'll go right to the Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline and welcome in David Bellarosa, who is the director of the film called Here We Are. And I guess the best way I could describe this is uh, not your typical uh, rom-com. Uh, David, is that a fair way to describe the movie that you're going to be showing this weekend? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a romantic comedy <laughs> with, uh, with a very interesting twist. And uh, uh, the setting for this film, uh, Austin, Texas, which uh, a city that I had the privilege of visiting a couple years ago for the Marconi Awards. Uh, Austin is kind of a, a big city, but with a very small western town kind of feel to it. Does the setting of Austin, Texas uh, play any sort of special role in this, uh, this romantic comedy? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I honestly, I don't think it could have really taken place anywhere else other than a bunch of kind of <laughs> outsider outlaw types kind of <laughs> hanging around this interesting city. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a uh, it's a good setting for an interesting story like this. So, uh, so walk us through it, uh, David. What makes this such uh, a uh, sort of offbeat romantic comedy? Uh, I guess it has to do with the characters, uh, where they are in their lives. You know, um, at the moment, uh, who they want to be someday and how they're going to get there. Um, I think it has to do with, you know, what they feel like they have to do to get by, which is uh, he checks into uh, they they meet each other in a medical research facility called Medico, which Mm. we made uh, actually built in this uh, old factory that we found um, in town. And uh, they meet in this medical research facility where they are getting... uh, pharmaceuticals, new pharmaceuticals tested on them for money. Uh, and Andy's there because his girlfriend just left him and he needs money to pay back his older brother. Uh, and his RV's broken down and he wants to fix it up and finally hit the road and get the hell out of there. Interesting. So it, it's it's kind of an interesting place to, to find true love. I mean, when you're getting injected with uh, test medications and you're a lab rat just trying to make a few dollars, can, can true love really exist in an environment like that? I guess that's the answer that we get in the movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess true love can really uh, it could exist anywhere, you know. I guess so. Two people. I guess so. Now the girl, uh, Misty, is, is her name. Is she like his next drug that he's experimenting with, or is she a real person that <laughs> that really gets real human emotions out of him? I, I'm dying to see how this story plays out. Uh, no, she. I mean, you know, she's got her own thing going on too, and uh, honestly, she kind of. Uh, I you know I, I I really for for her and her his, his ex girlfriend she's a sign language interpreter and they literally don't talk at all and then he meets her and it just opens up and they 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 actually talk and they find like a true connection nice where they're at you know they both want to do something great with their lives they want to be artists um, and they want more. All right. uh, so, I, I gotta see. Yeah, I gotta so, see how this plays out. So, uh, all right, well, you gotta come. I, I just might to see how this whole thing uh, kind of winds up. Right, but uh, right. a romantic comedy. There, there's big laughs in this movie, David. And, and are people laughing at this movie? People are laughing the whole time. Honestly, the first time we played the movie, we uh, premiered it at the Austin Film Festival. We played it in Mexico uh-huh. uh, at the Oaxaca Film Festival. Now we're gonna be playing it and in San Antonio, and now we're playing in New Jersey, which is where I'm from. So it's huge. I'm really. Thank you so much. Oh, for nice! Uh, welcome home. That's great. Awesome about that. Yeah, and every time it plays, it's like there's basically this laugh track that I didn't even realize. Honestly, I you know when you're editing a movie, <laughs> you're writing a movie, you're making a movie, you're editing a movie, you forget that some things are funny to you because they become just part of your language or right. your life or the way that your perspective. So, and then when you get in a theater filled with a bunch of people who are usually in a theater because they're open to laughing or feeling something or seeing something the laughs just start coming and then before you know it it's just like it's one after another and and when you have a good audience in there you know it just the laughs keep coming it feels great that's great um, yeah you know i never yeah. thought of that perspective as a director because when you're in doing the editing process you're you're looking at the lighting you're looking at the uh the the, the clothing you're looking at that you're making sure the sound is everything that it needs to be and when when that aspect of it is perfect you know what what they're saying and doing is pretty darn funny let's not lose track of that exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome exactly. stuff wow so it's um, and you know laughter and comedy for me for especially with these first couple of films is really important and I just want to get people laughing and feeling stuff. Yeah. 
Feeling good. Cool. Very good. So you, you'll be there for a Q and A, uh, and you'll you'll talk to the people about the movie. And uh, uh, this was filmed entirely in Austin. You said uh, you made an abandoned warehouse look like a medical lab. Yeah, we found. It took a while to find the right place, but we found this uh, abandoned computer chip factory uh, <laughs> on the okay. outskirts of town. And we went in there, and uh, we, you know, looked all around. We found this executive wing, and uh, we turned that into, I guess, where you see the day room and a lot of the uh, blood draw room, and they have a big cafeteria. And so we, you know, we turned it into what we needed. We rented it. You know, we didn't just like squat in there. We had to actually come negotiate a rental and we got it for a month and they're really nice and thank god for them you Great. Know, we couldn't have pulled it off and it, it, everybody thinks it's a real place uh like how'd they let you shoot in uh was it hard to get them to let you shoot in the <laughs> right. medical research facility people ask me like we act no we just made it i mean it's not a real place no it's really cool i have a promo picture in front of me and there's people wearing this this fictitious medico t-shirts and there's two uh, like nurses i guess uh, or phlebotomists who are in matching scrubs that you'd swear they were professionals at drawing blood and there's people there with little it, tourniquets on their arms and it looks like a legitimate uh, legitimate medical laboratory in this promo picture that i have yeah the one on the right <laughs> the redheaded phlebotomist is actually one of my best friends ashley from since i was like 18 years old oh that's great um so a lot of the phlebotomists were either extras we found or friends of mine or people that wanted to be in it. Uh, I actually met my fiance right after the movie. Wow. The shooting, and she was an actual phlebotomist. See, there uh, is true at love. A place, <laughs> at a place like Medico. There is true uh, love in this setting. Exactly. It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. It was unbelievable. Well, but, um, yeah. Awesome stuff. The shirt says redefining research, uh, bright yellow, which looking back as far as the color, uh, coloring the movie, it be made it kind of a nightmare to get these yellows right. I never got them really to pop the way I wanted. Oh, them. gotcha. They okay, were so bright, but it was my idea that you know we have this kind of bland interior world of Medico, and then you have these people, and they wear these bright shirts because you know they're the brightest part of it. Gotcha. That's cool. You know what? This yeah. thing takes off. You could have my, your own line of merch of these fake uh, Medico T-shirts. You know, uh, I have a soil, I have a Soylent Green Cookie Factory T-shirt, which is completely fake, but uh, you know, something like this could catch on. You never know. So awesome. Right, let's hope so. My <laughs> next movie has, uh, has another shirt to it too, so I could get in the shirt business. Too, oh, you all. please keep us posted on that. Uh, but David Bellarosa, great to talk to you this morning, and congratulations. Uh, and I appreciate sharing a couple laughs with you today. And hopefully, it's going to be a good weekend for you. But Congratulations on the film, and we'll talk again soon, I hope. All right? Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. You bet. Yeah, Anytime. Really appreciate it. You bet. Have Take care. Day. You as well. Thanks a lot. All right. We'll come back. We'll continue our interview series next. Continuing our interview series this morning with the New Jersey Film Festival. Spring 2019 is underway and continuing. You can visit njfilmfest.com. All the information, the complete schedule, and see the great films that are coming up this weekend. How about tomorrow at Voorhees Hall, number 105, where three films will be shown? The film right in the middle is a 33-minute film looking at the life and work of pet portraitist Mimi Vang Olsen. And with me here uh, on the uh, Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline is uh, the guy with the film. He is Anthony Moranville uh, to talk about the film that's going to be shown uh, on Friday. Anthony, good morning. It's Burt Barron. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. I, I don't know that. My pleasure. I don't know the name of Mimi Vang Olsen, but uh, looking at a, a promotional picture for your film here, I know I've seen her work before. It's pretty renowned work uh, that she does in terms of uh, of ma- painting portraits uh, of pets. I'm I'm sure I've seen her work all over the world. Oh yeah, she's she's uh, been featured in uh, movies like Wes Anderson, and uh, she's uh, everywhere. She does postcards and calendars and holiday cards. She's done, uh, and this is Shanna Stein. I'm the producer Hi, on Shanna. the film. And, Hi, and, and I'm also Anthony's wife. Uh, Mimi's also done a work with the HSPCA. To, she, she's used her artwork to uh, volunteer and raise money for pet causes as well. Um, but when we first came across Mimi, we came across her because of her shop out front and uh, her storefront. She's the last artist with her own storefront in Greenwich Village. Wow. So that, that that's a story right there. And then I'm sure you guys kind of got to know her and delve into the work a little bit and said, yeah, well, what a story this would make. Uh, what was her background like growing up, uh, Anthony? Was she always involved in painting and art? Was it kind of like uh, kind of in her blood uh, as a child? Yeah, her father was an artist. And uh, so she grew up with that. 
and she was always interested from an early age. And then she actually got her start in advertising. And uh, she she told us a story where she crossed paths with Andy Warhol early on. Wow. And uh, that's kind of her life. She's always kind of at this intersection of pop culture and entertainment. The more we got to know her, the more we found out these kind of wild stories, some of which we included in, in, the, in the documentary. Now, a lot of her work that she does, uh, is this of people's pets where uh, sometimes people will submit a, a real picture of one of their pets? Maybe it's a, a lost pet that they'd like to immortalize somehow. Uh, does she get her inspiration from real pet owners as in, hey, can you capture my dog, my cat, my, my parrot in a picture or something? Uh, she actually won't do a painting off of a photograph. She has to go and meet the animals and spend time with them. Interesting. Part of her process. <laughs> yes, she um, she uh, insists on meeting them, being in their home environment, seeing with them, um, and she won't do pets who have passed. Okay. That's also another one of her interesting quirks. Um, one of the things she does is she'll end up painting them in their favorite chair with their favorite toy. Um, part of the joy for her of being an artist is really capturing the essence of the pet, and she sees them as family members. And as we discovered in the course of the film, everybody who's getting a, a painting of their pet, of course, also sees them as family members. And um, we were quite taken with her unique ability to capture uh, to capture that. Yeah, it's great work, and I have a promotional picture that I'm looking at at njfilmfest.com, and it's uh, four black and white cats who are just kind of staring right through your soul. I mean, just looking right through you. And a dog to the left of the cats who looks absolutely terrified to be so close to the cats, maybe. But but I can see why she wants to be with them, because you look at the, each way she's painted each of these pets so uniquely, she captures their essence. I can tell right away which of these cats is a troublemaker, which one is the oldest one, which one is the loyal one. I can see why she she wants to make that connection before she uh, creates her art. I can see why. Yeah, that was that was an early work of hers. Those are actually her pets, and that was one of the <laughs> first ones when she she changed from uh, doing ads and family portraits to to pets. That poor yeah, dog. And, he looks and, so scared. And, and, <laughs> I would be too. Right, if I poor cat. Me too. Um, one of the families that we follow in the story, she does two white dogs and talks about the challenge, and they're both Westies. Um, and um, she talks about the challenge of, of painting white dogs as well, as, and I think a lot of artists will understand that, um, just working with shades of white, and also getting the personality differences between the two. Um, and uh, for a spoiler alert, um, the the family, as soon as it, it's unveiled, they knew exactly which dog was which, and I couldn't tell the difference between the two of them in person. Wow. <laughs> How cool is that? Meeting. But yeah, she, she's uh, she's really a, a unique a unique character. And um, another exploration for us was just the relationship between families and people and their pets. And we thought, you know, who are these people that are paying this crazy money to get their um, pet portraits done? And we saw it was everybody from you know from all economic backgrounds, really. And the universality is you know, how much everybody loves their pets and that, you know, our pets are our family. Right, right. Now, was she open to having uh, her work and her life kind of explained like this? Because a lot of times artists, as brilliant as they could be and as much of an impact as they have on so many people, a lot of them are very private and very introverted, and they want just their art and their work to kind of speak for them. Was she open to sort of like uh, having the book of her life kind of uh, put out in this movie here, uh, Anthony? Was she okay with her story being told like this? For the most part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, took a, it took a minute. It sounds like it took a little prying on your part to get her to open up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, a little bit. I mean, but once we got her on board, she was great, and she was completely receptive and open to to what we wanted to show. And as soon as her clients were okay with it, she was okay with it. And she is a, a big personality and very opinionated. And it turned out really fun. Wonderful. I, it sounds like it I makes for a great film. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I think always the hesitation with anybody is to make sure what light you're going to present them in. And once she knew we were coming from a just complete place of, you know, love and admiration and um, that we, we just wanted to kind of put a little spotlight on some outsider art um, as, a, as opposed to, you know, the, the um, 
high-end art world. Um, this is just more approachable art. This is art that everyday art and for everyday people. And in New York, there's a lot of snobbery around the mm. art world and, and whatnot, yet she's the person who's still standing. She's the one who's still there 30 years later. She's, as we said, the only one who has her own storefront. So there's kind of a, a, a story there as well. That All right. It's not fashionable. It's not trendy. It's just it's steadfast. And, um, and it's, as we said, it's universal, and that's something that's everlasting. It's people's love and people's love for their family and their pets. It's raw and it's real, and that's what all great art is. So that's what makes uh, this film sound like it, it's going to be a great watch. So it will be shown uh, tomorrow at the New Jersey Film Festival at Voorhees Hall. So uh, go on over there and, uh, and check it out. Guys, thanks so much for the time today, and uh, good luck with the film. And it was a real pleasure to speak with you both today, okay? All right, thank you.